welcome to my garden. Uh, I'm going to pot up a couple containers here uh, with plants for my garden. This year, I didn't buy many plants, so I was being frugal. I spent most of my time on, I'm an organic gardener, so everything's been prepped of the soil. And this year I did a lot of seed, other than this one tomato plant, which we will put in, is a sun gold from Purdy. And so that's the way my gardening is, a lot of finding opportunities. This year I got um, rabbit manure for my gardens, everything's organic. And um, so I also liked it, the reuse, recycle. My garden is made out of everything that's twisted and recycled and saved because there's so much uh, incredible stuff in our community, wood chips, uh, you name it, bamboo, anything you need. This was a secondhand basket and someone gave me some burlap so that I lined it with burlap so that we could contain that soil. Like the Dalai Lama says, we just have to be happy and useful. So if something is useful and can be of use for a while, and beauty is important for me too, I love natural materials. And then I have this container too, which I got from um, Art Co. in a sale table, and then put the burlap and then put my just potting soil. So we're talking about what's in my potting soil. As you can see in the background, these beds have been, they used to be driveway. This has been years of, I'm a landscaper, so whenever in the winter time I bring home mulch and I put it on the beds and it breaks down. I have in between all my paths put wood chips because the wood chips, I have a very, um, intense gardening method it's not i don't have a lot of land but i try to get it um, to produce as much as possible in organics now organics means i'm not buying fertilizer i will use manure and i got the rabbit manure which was just wonderful because rabbit doesn't burn and it's something that um, just promotes growth, that first growth. So that first number is the green growth that's going to get things growing. And then the second part of that is the latter numbers are more uh, inorganic gardening. I have to feed it with um, compost. So over in the piece of property, I've been co I compost our uh, kitchen waste. I take them out. I have a a box. I put the waste in and I add, uh, I have horse manure that is in sawdust that a friend, I go get from a friend. So every time I go through, throw my chicken waste or my kitchen waste out, I put manure sawdust on it all through the winter. So all winter I'm stacking that, just throwing it in, throwing it in, throwing it in. And then this spring I took out my sieve, a screen, and I sieved it and I put it in my gardens because the compost is the third part of that that will go to fruiting and flowering and that's the third thing that you'll need. In this place where we have so much wildlife, I'm so proud that I am not doing the old method which is just to scrape off the weeds and add a chemical, but to me I would rather have a sustainable growth and sustain the land and so I'll use these mulching methods make it so that I don't have to worry about the weeding and also it is adding moisture so that uh, as we get these hot summers, we need to hold that moisture. I had a mentor, Ruth Bartlett from Spring Hill Farms who uh, had huge farm, organic farms and it wasn't how big something was, it was that the flavor and the nutrients and everything is there. and. I also believe that we are increasing the area in which wildlife and other things are going to um, be able to also exist in, in this time, which is very important, very important to me. In my garden, I haven't cut down all the trees. I work with some of the things. Sometimes I have more shade than other places. I'm an artist, and as an artist, I know my materials. I'm at an uh, older age, and 
Uh, art for me has given, given me a lot of information on what materials do and what materials I can work with. Here we go. Um, I feel sorry that everything isn't uh, lush and flowering right now, but we're still at the beginning of the season. So these little plants will get bigger. Um, I'm gonna start with this one right here. And I'm gonna start, this one's gonna be a little cooler one. So I'm gonna start with, I've got a couple peas that I'm gonna put in the corner here so that they can drape over and or climb up a wall if that's where you end up placing it. There, when what we do is we just put a hole, tuck it in, give it a good tuck. I don't really label all my stuff and even know what I have. That's, I love mystery, so I'm okay with the mystery. I know the plants well enough. I, I would almost say that's bok choy or else it might be cauliflower. So we're gonna put some bok choy and or cauliflower in here because I like the green. And I'm going to split it up a little bit too because these are gonna get so much bigger. And I have to break them apart carefully. Ow, 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 okay. <laughs> and then I'm going to put one of these in here. And all I do is tuck them in and I probably, in this bed, I will add a little extra soil once everything gets in and gets situated. I believe they're zinnias, so I'll put those zinnias in here. They'll get a little taller and add a little color as they get bigger. This other bed, I've got more zinnias over there. We'll do this one and then uh, I may have to go get some more and put them in. Because then that will have a little color there. And those will get big. And let's put one more P, this time on this side, so that you get a balance. Often in art, gardening, whatever, asymmetrical is always nice. Threes are good. Balance and symmetry are okay if you're doing the entrance and you want it balanced. Anyway, there we go. So we got that one in. Now, I'm gonna go for this one. And I do have these uh, garlic, which I think I'll put in because in this, you'll use it up in the summer and then uh, this plant could go out in your garden for next year and then you'll have more and more garlic as it goes. So we'll put one of those in. And they're not gonna get super tall, but they may make a few garlic heads. Well, last year I was passionate about garlic because I found Costco had China garlic uh, my niece in Friday Harbor always grew garlic and she wasn't growing it anymore and we eat a lot of garlic so I was missing it. So I put them in late. You have to put them in really early before, just before winter. And I put them in at winter. So for one year they grew but I only got, I didn't get the doubled heads. I only got as much as I had put in. And this one I'm just going to clip that off so that the growth can go into the roots rather than the flower. So, and in this one, we're putting some cosmos. So we're gonna, I'm gonna put a couple cosmos. These are also from uh, Purdy, from our Tacoma Boys or whatever that garden store is there. Local boys. Local boys. I don't really do seed catalogs. I go out in the world and I always find what the deal of my neighborhood is. So. Uh, Tacoma boys have deals on things. Everybody's got deals. So I just look for it. I thought those cosmos were really nice. I'm also going to put the sun gold because I think this big one can handle uh, tomato. So, and I'm going to put the tomato back here because you could have a little lattice on here. You're going to want to attach this to a wall or whatever anyway, so it doesn't fall down and break the plants. That's the only catch. So I'm going to put the tomato in the back corner so that it could, and I just open her up there. And what you want to do with tomatoes is you want to lay them on their side and bury part of it for better growth. So I'm going to lay it on its side here, roots down in. I'm going to dig it a little deeper, hang in there. I talk to them too, you know, 
I introduce them. So what I did was uh, I moved the cosmos forward because I realized, yes, I have to bury part of the tomato stem uh, so that it, it just grows better. So I'm turning the root ball on its side in the corner here, tucking it in. Then I'm laying it down this way. Okay, now I'm going to bury that and we'll get more dirt. The more you bury, it just makes a stronger plant when you're done. So I'm burying it up to here. Now this will, it'll, it'll come alive. It'll turn itself upward. I'm gonna add a little more dirt here, which I wanted to do anyway. I wanted a little almost up to the top. So this is working out fine. Okay, I'm putting it at the back, laying that down. And you see these little parts here will come up and start growing. I'm gonna take that leaf off, anything that's damaged, like fine, fine horn gardening, anything that's damaged we take off. Okay, what else do I have? Um, why not, let's put, since this is a big enough little, con big enough little container. All right, you stand up straight. I'm gonna add, I've got some parsley. <laughs> and you can see this, this is just good organic soil. So I'm gonna put some parsley along the edge. So by an intensive gardening is basically you're adding, the flowers are also doing their part. You know, bees come in, things come in to um, do their work and so they're attracted by the flowers. My garden is just like my artwork, based on my intuitive. I'm not a person that knows everything, but I know, but I, I have worked long enough to feel that something is right and just go forward with that. I want in my garden a little bit of vegetables and some uh, flowers and, you know, why aren't we eating out of those spaces? Um, I know that flowers give us uh, beauty and comfort and that's important. Organic food is my mission in life. I just believe in it and I want to keep sharing um, its importance, especially for our planet at this time. I don't look at this big piece of property, it would overwhelm me, but I just take this little place and say, now that I'm working on this, I'm going to finish this and make this a special little thing. I also come to my garden for peace, to write, to be creative, and I think we need these spaces. As you can see, I enclose my garden because I want a feeling of sanctuary and also I don't have deer because I've enclosed it. And that was a slow year after year choice of how to build these fences with materials. The fencing was inex rather inexpensive for a lightweight high speed answer to what I needed. So I get to create my own space um, and a garden is a space for sanctuary. And this is again the, I think it's bok choy. And I think we've got a little more room. So let's put a few carrots in. I think we could do, we're gonna have a little bit of parsley along the edge here. I'm gonna put the carrots right back in here. Even though the tomato will grow up and have a few um, branches, uh, if, if we stake it up, then uh, we have plenty of room for these carrots in here. And again with the carrots, uh, I didn't label, but I bought a lot of red, short fat, and miscellaneous. So this is sort of a miscellaneous mix, but, oh, and look, I think there's a flower in there too. So this is good, we get what we get. So I have a little row of carrots there. I will put in two, not now, but later. I, I think I have a couple little short ball carrots that I'll stick in here too, because all this is gonna fill up. And then I'm gonna put a carrot in here too. I like to get everything in mixed with each other, not necessarily row by row. I sometimes do rows, but um, it's, it's really best when you just get everything as nature would make it, mixed up and, and some tall, some short, some this and that, and then leave it alone and let it 
create its own environment. Then there's more parsley here. So I'm going to stick more parsley. Oh, I'm going to do a whole little row of parsley along the edge here. So this will be a nice little uh, planter pot to have by your front door or whatever with a pick off uh, the sun gold, which are little yellow tomatoes. And um, then you'll have the other veggies too. You know, lettuce isn't easy to grow to get a good tasting lettuce if you're not getting fertilizers. Lettuce, to me, uh, what I do with my lettuce is my beds, I make sure that it has plenty of leaf mold. I happen to have a chipper, so sometimes I put leaf mold, mushroom compost, and twigs and grind it all up. And so I'm just layering, layering, layering. I have a chiminea and I have friends with fireplaces. So uh, lime is very important to have a very sweet soil. Uh, lettuce likes to be sweet, and so it does need lime. So I'm gonna put a little row of lettuce in the front of this one, and tuck them in, in there. It's just a nice uh, light leaf lettuce, and there's a mixture of lettuces in here. And I'll even put some in between because even the shadow of that is going to give our little lettuces a little uh, reprieve from too much sun. In the fall, I do wreaths. So I have a whole lot of wreaths out of dried things that I've gathered. So I just took it apart. It had marigold. It had zinnia. It had rose hips. It had all kinds of seed. I took many of my wreaths apart and then gave back to the soil. Said, you know, last year I... I took you, I dried you, I made you into this beautiful thing, and now I'm going to put you back. I had lots of seed. And today, seed is not only expensive, but um, hard to be true to your sources of who we're getting this from and what isn't GM, GMO and what isn't promoting the GMO mindset. It, it's an amazing time that many of you are home gardening, baking, being with your loved ones, and we're really finding out what the most important thing in life is and that it is essential when we do it. And, you know, it's, it's been pretty busy. It's pretty nice to just sit and find out what the important stuff is and hopefully from here on out act on those, those things to make more of that in our life. And I really believe that I feel blessed to be alive and hopefully teaching right now because I have a lot of information on this that I want to share and I want to be more and more accessible to everyone. So I feel, you know, so excited that Mustard Seed came to talk to me about this. I had talked earlier about having the elephant garlic. So this is my elephant garlic patch here and here. This has a few others, some broccoli and some, there is some more bok choy over there so I can see it as it gets a little bigger. In here, there's a little mustard. And uh, this is a lettuce, which I planted uh, the same types of lettuce in those planters. So as they get bigger, they will be just a really nice lime green thrive sort of lettuce. Um, and I have some potatoes. Uh, in between here, there's some glads and some other stuff. The garlic will come up and get ahead pretty soon. Once that, that bulb comes up, then what I'll do, those are called rasps, I will pinch those off. Because right now what it is doing is it's creating that clove. I planted it in early winter, and so it's had a long time to establish. Garlic takes a while. Uh, but in about a month, it will have a scape. I will cut off the scapes. I'm going to cut them off because if I left them on, all of that energy that was into making a clove will go back up to the top and you won't have anything. So you want to cut your scapes off, fry them up, barbecue them, marinate them, whatever. And then I will dig them and then I'll dry them out and uh, next year, I may not use a lot of them because I'm trying for one more year of multiplying how much I have so that I will have enough to eat, share, and replant. The other wonderful thing about gardens is 
they're always changing. Something's always going out and then you get to put something else in. You're always kind of starting seeds and going, okay, then that will come out and then you'll put some new seed in. Gardening for me is an entire year sort of thing. So there's always something, uh, even with this, sometimes there'll be a plant that I'll let go to seed so that I can get the seed. Well, that plant will take a lot of energy, but I'll give it that energy because then I'll get the seed from it and be in gathering my own seed too. I'm getting a better stock. Uh, these beds have been here for a while. The brick were recycled. So the brick is adding again, some heat. I like the fact that it's a hill so that everything when I water just runs down. In these beds, I have lilies, garlic, lettuce, carrots, potatoes. These are some um, Swiss chard that is coming back. So what I may do is let it go to seed and then try and gather the seed. I'm finding more and more, the more I get older, the more I try and bring it into what is manageable and what can I take care of and then I can enjoy it more because I'm going to take care of that. And there's not the more, more, more. Now I get to stand under the horse chestnut because I have a, a great memory as a child. I lived upstairs on Wallachia Bay where we had a beautiful flowering horse chestnut. And um, anyway, that just so, in, I can remember my Led Zeppelin poster there. Led Zeppelin was playing and that horse chestnut was just, did my heart, thrilled my heart to see its flowering. Thank you, Mustard Seed, so much for visiting me here in my garden. I wanted one other photo where you get to see the, my room with a view. Uh, I hope that your gardens give you joy and food and knowledge and sanctuary because working the one thing I know is when I get out and start working in the earth, all else flows away. I am uh, brought back to, and refreshed and um, know a little more and have uh, been with nature, which is very important. And I, I know people, that it's easy for me to say, but wherever you can make your sanctuary as tiny or as big as it is, just find a little spot and grow something. Hi there, and welcome to Sunnycrest Nursery. My name is Debbie Cassidy, and I'm the owner of Sunnycrest Nursery, and I'm about to take you through how to plant containers to take you through the spring and the summer. It'll be a part shade, part sun container, and really easy to put together. So there are three basic rules to building a really decent container. And the container I'm building here is actually gonna end up out in the front of our building on the front porch. So we're going to be looking at it from the front view rather than all the way around. So when we go to plan out our containers, we want to start first with your thriller plant. And that's usually the tallest plant that's going to be in your container. Now, if you were to look at it from all around in a 360 degree view, your plant would end up in the center. 
But in this case, we're going to see it from just three sides, here and in the front. So we're going to move it towards the back. And what I'm starting with today is a Gartenmeister fuchsia. And this can take about three to four hours sun, as well as three to four hours of shade. Thus, our part shade, part sun container. And they're some of the easiest containers for you to put together. So we're going to start with our thriller. And we usually plant it so it's about two inches from the top of the container so that when you go to water your plants, it's going to be able to hold the water a little bit without it all just flowing over the edges. So we're going to get this guy in first. We are planting in a composted potting soil mix. So it's got back guano, cow manure in it, it's got wood shavings, uh, mushroom compost, just all these good things um, for your plants and it's all organic. There is no need to put fertilizer in it for the first couple of weeks. Let them get settled in first and then you can go through and start fertilizing about once every every other week is about what I recommend. Yeah. So the next plants we're going to start putting in are our filler plants. So we have thrillers and fillers and then we're going to have spillers that actually spill over the edges to help soften the edges. And that's a great way to remember how to put together a typical container. So let's get our fillers in. And I'm starting off here with New Guinea Impatience in this stunning violet purple color. Your Gartenmeisters are actually going to have a coral orange color. And you'll notice how dark the leaves are in both of them, which is why I took a spiller to really brighten it up and add contrast to the container. So we're going to put some of our fillers on the outside here. And I'm going in threes with these guys. And I'm pushing this front guy back just a hair so I can leave just enough room in the very front for a spiller plant. Your New Guineas are fantastic because they bloom constantly throughout the summer. They're low maintenance. They pretty much shed their own blooms. And then we have another filler plant, and this is called Euphorbia Glitz. And I really like it because it's just light and lacy. And we're going to stick him kind of in between here. And I pack my containers because we want instant color. And most of these are annuals anyway. So it's not going to hurt them or have them get root bound any time soon. You don't have to worry about that. So I just say be generous and don't be afraid to pack your containers full so that they look fantastic from the very start. So you can see how they start to fill in all the gaps in between. And then we're going to put in a spiller. This is a fantastic kind of lime green Carex grass, and I just love them because they just get these long leaves on them, and they're just great for softening the edges. Not to mention the neon green. This looks fantastic against these darker colors. And then we have one more spiller, believe it or not, that we're going to put in here. can get them untangled. And this is Creeping Jenny. And this will probably come back year after year. A lot of folks put these out in the garden and they creep along the ground like a ground cover. But in this case, we're going to use it here in the container so that we have one more spiller going in the front. Just like that. And these can get really long. These can get up to two, almost three feet long, if you let them. <laughs> I like to trim them so it keeps them full. And then we're just going to fill in some gaps.
And I just try to make sure that all the air spaces are filled in so the water can get in and around the roots thoroughly. The plants will be happy. leaves in there. Okay. Not quite sure how long that took. <laughs> Not very long. Not very long. <laughs> Not very long at all. And then as all these start to fill in, you're going to have all your color here as well as up here at the top. And this is going to get taller. If you feel it's getting too tall, just pinch out the tops and it will actually send out more blooms along the sides. So there you go, a part shade, part sun container. I recommend you feed these every other week once they get established. Of course, keep them watered. And you'll have color all the way until the month of September. And if you see some of these are starting to get tired, you could probably keep this and all your spillers and just replace something with more fall colors if you want to. So it takes you all the way through the season without you having to constantly replace all your plants. And that's all there is to it.